When you think of the best video game of all time, what do you think of? Red Dead 2, Portal, maybe even Mario 64, Breath of the Wild, Minecraft? Today we are playing with the poop mod in Minecraft. Those are all great games, but what if I told you they were all wrong? What if I told you one of the best video games of all time was one that came in a cereal box at the turn of the century? One that was a 2D simulation game made by one guy. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yes, Roller Coaster Tycoon, the amusement park simulation computer game where you are the sole omniscient power over guests. You can build food stalls, bathrooms, rides and roller coasters. and even manage the pricing of everything to become the Mark Zuckerberg capitalist poster child of theme parks. Released in 1999, the year that Jar Jar Binks made his debut, Britney Spears was dating Justin Timberlake, frosted tips were hairstyle of choice, and everyone was freaking out about if computers could do the year 2000 and that meant the world was gonna end or something. Meanwhile, Roller Coaster Tycoon was being distributed to kids and teens across the world, I think, via physical disc to embark on their own Tycoon Journey. Roller Coaster Tycoon was special to me and many other Zillennials for being a seemingly simple amusement park simulator with various scenarios to be and endless possibilities for your park. You want to make a beautiful park? Go for it. You want to recreate the same six flags that your sixth grade boyfriend dumped you at? Be my guest. You want to create a torture chamber that guests can never leave for all of eternity? I'm begging you to end the suffering. You can even ignore the scenario gameplay and just build a park with no end or goal in sight. It's like endless mode on Tetris, but way more fun. Roller Coaster Tycoon was one of the first of its kind to kind of be this like, open world sandbox type game that the kids were missing amongst super linear titles like the Zeldas, Pokemon, Resident Evil, or even just fighting games like Mortal Kombat or Tekken, we had Roller Coaster Tycoon. And this was before Sims, before Zoo Tycoon, before Animal Crossing, and other huge simulation sandbox if you want it to be type games that hadn't come out yet. The other big simulation game we had at the time was Harvest Moon for the SNES, only releasing three years prior to Roller Coaster Tycoon. At the time, there was almost nothing like Roller Coaster Tycoon. And not just for this reason. The even more impressive and unique thing about this game was that it was built by just one guy before it was cool. <laughs> Chris Sawyer. This is the guy you can thank for Mr. Bone's wild ride that takes four years to complete. Chris was a huge nerd from Scotland. Chris liked computers so much, but he couldn't afford the fancy BBC computer he wanted. So he bought a British home computer to start writing simple programs in machine code, like a poor nerd. And he graduated with a degree in computer science and microprocessor systems. But you know what Chris didn't graduate in and didn't see coming? Internet privacy. And neither did I, but I gotta make these ad transitions work. Aura is an easy to use service that protects your privacy online by opting you out of dozens of data broker websites. And if you've tried to do this yourself, you know how tedious and impossible this task is. They monitor your emails and passwords and let you know, hey buddy, your password, I love feet 45, was involved in a data breach and you really shouldn't be using that password for your social medias and banking. And also maybe think about your life decisions. They also monitor your bank accounts and credit cards and alert you whenever there's attempted fraud with your identity, which is really nice to have in a family plan like I do, especially to protect older members of your family that might be susceptible to scams or identity theft, and they can really keep a close eye on that really easily with Aura.com. So I mentioned a lot of features, and that's because Aura is kind of like a one-stop shop for internet privacy protection, so you're not paying for like seven different services for password management, data broker remover, and identity theft protection all separately. Go to Aura.com slash Gabby Bell to try 14 days free and let Aura do the hard work of protecting your private information online. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring and back to one of my favorite games of all time. So you know Sid Meier's, the guy that made Civ? So he made this game in the 90s called Railroad Tycoon. And Chris was a pretty big fan, so he started to make his own game called Transport Tycoon. 
Sounds riveting. And he made this in his signature isometric style. And you can kind of see that it looks like a precursor to what Roller Coaster Tycoon ended up looking like. Transport Tycoon was released in 1994 by Micropose, which ironically was founded by Sid Meier's. So that must have been really cool for Chris. Chris expanded and improved upon the game, dropping Transport Tycoon Deluxe. And this sold so well that it allowed Chris the money to kind of just travel across Europe and America, where he wrote a bunch of roller coasters. I wish I was making this up. So instead of working on a sequel to Transport Tycoon like planned, Chris was like, nah, f trains. Roller coasters are what's up. So then, Chris coded Roller Coaster Tycoon and Transport Tycoon in a coding language called Assembly. An absolute madman writing in near machine code. Do you know what this is? This isn't Java, Python, C++, or C Sharp. What Chris used, Assembly, is a low level coding software that is basically the closest thing you can get to coding in ones and zeros. You have to tell the computer every waking step. For example, if you wanted to tell the computer to output hello world, this is what it would look like in Python, a high level coding language. It's just one line of code. Wrong way, shit. It's just one line of code. This is what that same line of code would look like if written in assembly. Yeah. For those of you that don't know much about coding, it's just a lot more steps. Newer programming languages are still difficult to learn, but they've made it much easier for people to use. So you don't have to write 15 lines of code just to output a sentence. Python is like me saying, hey, go make a peanut butter jelly sandwich, and you'll know what to do. Assembly would mean I have to tell you, use your feet to walk to the fridge, open the fridge with your right hand, stick hand into the fridge and grab peanut butter jar and remove it from the fridge. Put the jar on the counter next to the fridge. Twist the lid lefty loosey with your right while hand while holding the bottom of the jar with your and left. And account for every tiny little step that it takes to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Python can interpret and abstract the fine details that assembly requires you to lay out. That's why writing a whole intricate park management simulator in assembly is just so impressive, especially when you account for the physics and individual guest behavior in the game. For example, roller coaster speeds in the game account for the weight of each guest. The chonkier guests make the roller coaster go faster, while if a roller coaster is empty or less chonky, the coaster loses speed and goes slower. By the time Chris was coding this shit, another programming language called C was becoming the de facto gamer gunk language to code games like Mario 64, other Nintendo 64 games, and PlayStation games. So why did this roller coaster loving dork use a f***ing archaic language to make such a cool and hip game? Well, partially because he grew up learning and already knew how to use assembly. And he grew up in a time where memory on a computer was so much more scarce. I mean, the computer that he started to learn to code on had a maximum memory of 128 kilobytes of RAM. Nowadays, seasoned basement dwellers like me have 32 gigabytes of RAM just to ray trace Minecraft. So Chris had to become an optimization god, which is why his games ran so much faster than even other games at the time. Even with so many processes, time tracking, hundreds or thousands of individual guest actions and interactions. And so so many things happening on the screen at one time. This would, this would have been a lot for your computer to handle at one time back then. So if you didn't understand any of that, just pretend and go, whoa, wow, so impressive. Smart computer boy make game in harder way than he had to. You might be wondering, did this guy make any other games? Yeah, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 idiot, which was also made in assembly. And then Chris quit while he was ahead. But wait, you say, there's still Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and a bunch of other knockoffs with weird microtransactions and strange art styles. Well, for Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, Chris really only acted as a consultant for that and then kind of took a big break from game development after that and let other companies like Atari and Frontier Developments kind of take over from there. So Frontier Developments took over for Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, which I found really interesting because that same company went on to develop Zoo Tycoon. And even later on, what many would consider to be the spiritual successor of Roller Coaster Tycoon, Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo. But why else has Roller Coaster Tycoon of all games withstood the test of time?
When you think about a truly fantastic game, many would consider replayability and timelessness. A truly great game from 20 years ago can still hold up and be relevant today. I mean, just think of Mario 64, 1996, Smash Melee, 2001, The Last of Us, 2013, Minecraft, 2011, Skyrim, 2011, Stardew Valley, 2016. One of the things that gives a game a new life is speedrunning. Essentially playing and replaying the same game with the intention to break it and exploit glitches in ways that you're not supposed to and play the game like we've never played it before. Nintendo forgot to put a speed cap for how fast you can go backwards, just like Super Mario 64 works with his BLJs. So we're going to use that to our advantage to try and get just enough speed by turning Link around hundreds of times so we can leave Outside Island early. But another way to play a loved game like you've never played it before is with mods. <laughs> With mods or modifications, you can poop in Minecraft and do whatever this is in Skyrim. I know how to break this. This will end it pretty quick. Ah, oh, good. My destruction increased. Why are you attacking me? But it's not just funny mods that break the game. You can add mods with quality of life improvements, add new armor and items in the game that weren't in the game before, or change the game completely like in Stardew Valley, where people have made mods that add new characters with new storylines. These mods made and sourced by the community give games a new life to play. This is why, in my opinion, Skyrim has stayed alive for over a decade, while Animal Crossing New Horizons died in under two years. People love Animal Crossing, but there's no reason to go back. And if you're wondering why there aren't mods for Animal Crossing New Horizons, that's because Nintendo makes it very, very, very difficult to mod their games and will shut you down if you try. So yes, another thing that makes Roller Coaster Tycoon so timeless is that there is still a dedicated community today that plays and consumes Roller Coaster Tycoon content regularly. Hello. Subscribe. Welcome. And in my opinion, this is partially thanks to a mod called OpenRCT2. If you're thinking of replaying Roller Coaster Tycoon, OpenRCT2 is a must download. If you've never dealt with mods before, they make it stupid easy to download and use, so I'll put a link in the description below. In 2014, dedicated fans of RCT completely rewrote Roller Coaster Tycoon in C++. Plus, plus get it? Because C++... Plus, like Plus. Plus, the game still runs exactly like it did in, when it was written in dinosaur language. But they fixed bugs, allowed the game to run natively on Mac, Linux, and modern Windows without hiccups. It adds quality of life improvements like autosave, and adds completely new features like multiplayer, which I've played a lot. And if you have a copy of Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 on Steam, you can link that up in OpenRCT2 and play both of them in there. There are also custom scenarios that you can download from other fans of the game with custom goals and maps. Personally, I think it's nice when developers of a game support and don't mind their games being modded. I think the moddability of a game keeps a game alive just by the hands of the community itself. But not all devs share that same opinion, which is why Nintendo will send you to the depths of hell for even thinking about a mod for Mario 64 that has updated graphics. So Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2 are awesome and timeless and moddable, but Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 has a first person cam, so who's really coming out on top now?